Future Focus Friday. Welcome back to another episode of Future Focus Friday. Today we are at Beltone in Salina with Dr. Kylie Young, the audiologist. Hello, Kylie. Hello, Mrs. Schlepp. <laughs> Hello. Would you just take some time to tell us um, kind of what your job title is here officially, how long you've been working here, and kind of why you got into this field? Okay. I am an audiologist, and I specialize in hearing and balance disorders. So I generally test people for their hearing loss, test for balance disorders, work with tinnitus or ringing in the ear. And I primarily focus on hearing aids and programming hearing aids for people in everyday life situations. I work with anybody from six weeks of age all the way up to 100. So I have a very wide range of people that I do work with. I have been in the field for about seven years now working with patients on a daily basis. And I chose it because I was actually diagnosed with a hearing loss at the age of four and have been wearing hearing aids ever since. So it was a passion that I have. I really love this field. And in my opinion, Opinion. it's not a job I get to come and I get to play every single day and help people change their lives that's awesome so you you came into the field because of a personal experience essentially mm -hmm. so what education and training did you need on top of that to be able to do what you're doing now I had to study a lot I went to the Ohio State University for four years and majored in speech and hearing science to get the educational background but then I actually had to go on to grad school for another four years and mm -hmm. It honestly went really, really fast, but I have to keep up with my license. I have to study about 20 hours every two years to continue my license on top of it. Okay. So what are some other necessary skills that, other than the education piece, what are some necessary skills that you feel like you somebody would need? You to have to be very outgoing. Everybody has a different personality type mm -hmm. and you have to change how you address some situations. Some people are very eager, ready to move forward. Other people are sometimes hesitant. So you have to be good at reading people, being able to understand where they're coming from, what are their concerns, addressing their main issues, and then going from there. If you have a very outgoing personality and really just enjoy working with people and talk all day long. I sit and talk all day long and it's mm -hmm. one of the best things that I enjoy. You really get to know everybody's personality, you get to know their lifestyles and and every now and then you get to be invited to 90th birthday parties. So <laughs> I really do enjoy yeah, getting to know people. Yeah, that, that's got to be challenging too to, like you said, work with such a broad range of mm -hmm. different people. Mm -hmm. But that's fun too. It is so fun. And nev no case is ever the same. Everything's yeah. different. No case walking in the door is going to be the exact same. Mm -hmm. So it's fun for me. I get to do different things on a daily basis, different activities and different training skills. So another, another thing with that I would say then is if you're a person, if you're a student out there watching and you really like structure and you like to know your day, Yes, this absolutely. this is a job that's going to throw you curveballs, and it's going to be a little bit more exactly. Yeah. Um, I see anywhere from about fifteen to twenty five patients a day, so every day mm -hmm. is different, and it's it's fun. Keeps me on your, my toes for sure. Yeah. So, what are some things that could disqualify you or make you no longer be able to hold your license? If you don't continue with the education, you don't study and do your twenty hours every two years, then obviously your license cannot be removed. If you would have any type of felonies or any severe charges, you could actually disqualify and lose your license. Okay, good things to know, right? Mm -hmm. You got all the good things, but you also have to balance all the yes. Requirements and you gotta, that you're you have to, to be careful. Um, every patient, um, you don't want to do any type of malpractice or injure a patient. And I mean, um, those are things that are very severe in cases, very rare. Okay, so one final question for you. What is a fun fact that you would like our students out there watching to know about this career? There is so many different varieties that you can do with audiology. It's not just working in a private practice. You can work in hospitals, you can work in ENT settings, mm -hmm. or um, in some cases in the bigger cities, you can work with cochlear implants, and you can actually be in the surgical or the operating room in some cases working with physicians, and especially in cases where there's cancer and they're treating with chemotherapy or just very heavy drugs, we actually monitor the hearing loss levels while the patient is under to 
let mm. the doctor or the surgeon know that, hey, this is causing the patient hearing loss. We need to change a different type of tactic. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. We can test balance disorders where we get to make people dizzy in some cases, mm -hmm. and we get to put people in different positions. And it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's very intriguing. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time to Absolutely. meet with us today and to share a little bit about what you do. Mm -hmm. It's so. fun. I always love spreading the joy of audiology to everyone. <laughs> and that is it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again.